another video. Uh, we're doing some straight foot lock attacks and options off of the single leg X. How you get to single leg X is up to you. A million ways. The routes to get there are not of concern for this video. What's of concern is what you do when you get there. There are a couple of very fine details about the single leg X that I want to convey. If you do this position uh, just a little bit off, you can get broken immediately if the person knows what they're doing. We'll look at how I like to finish my straight uh, single or blah, blah. my straight foot lock, my Achilles lock. My, we're going to look at three options we have from the single leg X. Not only my straight ankle lock, also known as the Achilles lock, um, which I have very particular thoughts on about that, as I do with all things. We're going to also look at a couple of options we can get into when they unravel our legs. Because single leg X is not a closed wedge, one of the best things they can do is unravel our legs, hurdle over the foot, and look to escape the position, come on top, whatever, or attack their, their own options. So as soon as they hurdle the leg, we're going to go into two things we can do off of that and still make them pay for being in the position. Right? Okay. So when it comes to single leg X, I have to leave single leg X. So when she has single leg X on me, the first thing I look at is what her inside foot is doing. Okay? If her inside foot is on what we call straight hamstring control, where it's on the same side as the leg that she has, so it's her left leg against my right leg, it's on the same side, this is good for her. This is safe. Okay? The moment she starts bringing her foot center line, or to what we call cross hamstring control, where her foot goes across our center lines and connects to my far hamstring, this is when she starts going into um, dangerous waters, right? Here, I'm just gonna grab her heel, scoop my butt close to her butt, so now she can't even escape her foot, two hands on the heel, and I'm just gonna lay back and pull the heel to my chin. And here is where you can get really strong heel hooks, right? It starts to affect the knee, the ankle, and you can actually get some good breaks. Worst case scenario, as I'm pulling, the foot pops out, and now I go into outside heel hooks, right? So those only really become options if your single leg X inside leg is on a cross hamstring control. So don't do that. There's only one scenario where I really play cross hamstring control, and that's if they're standing above me, and I want to off balance them. Otherwise, it's straight hamstring control all the way through, right? So when I have single leg X here, I have foot on the hip, heel on the hip, toes turned down, straight hamstring control, and my knee is touching my heel, okay? Um, I have really dexterous knees and hips, so my toes can touch the mat while my heel is in the hip, which actually, when she tries to unravel, it actually makes it rather hard. It kind of acts as a closed wedge, but it's not gonna last forever against somebody decent. It's still gonna be fairly easy for them to escape. So, when I want to start entering my straight foot lock, the first thing I want to do is make the side of her foot face the mat. If her, if her heel is on the mat and her toes are up, she can play hamstring curl motions. It's very hard to elevate the foot. So, I'm going to go inside knee control and push the knee open. Okay, as I push the knee open, it turns the side of her foot towards the mat and it's very weak for her. So, now I can easily harass the foot. So, I wrap up the ankle, right? Keep pushing the knee and I'm going to look back. If I can see the toes, I'm too close to the knee. So I'm gonna keep pushing and I'm gonna slide my elbow back. I look back, no toes. That means I'm very low on the ankle. It's called an Achilles lock for a reason, right? Also, if you're open here and there's space, and there's space, you're not gonna get a good lock. Okay, I can barely even touch my hands together. So by closing my elbow, not only do I compress the ankle much more, but I offer myself more grip on my wrist. Watch how more extended my arm gets. So if I go here, look. Now I can easily grab my wrist. This is a suboptimal position to finish on my elbow. I can finish. Ah, a lot of pressure. I can finish. But watch. I'm just going to take my shoulder point to the mat and lift my hips. Look. Here. Easy. No energy. All right? So let's see where she's tapping to find out how much more I have. So again, push the knee. Wrap up the ankle. Slide back. Close your elbow. Hands together. You want to bring your hands to chin and chin to hands. Always compressing this space. So I want to use my back, my posterior chain for the finish, not my bicep curl. Okay, so here, watch, let's see where she finishes. Here, okay, so she's tapping here. I still have all of this and all of that to get my finish going, right? So I still have 80, 90% of my motion left after she's tapping. So that's a broken leg. 
She's already at breaking point at 10%. If I get to 50, broken. 70, broken. And in a match, I'm not going that slow, right? I'm ripping that thing, make sense? So when I get here, she knows I have a good foot lock. So she's like, I better get out of this. So she starts to unravel. As soon as she hurdles her hips over my foot, my, what was the outside foot is gonna turn into the inside foot. And I'm gonna hook high up on her hip. I'm really wrapping my laces around her hip here. And right? I'm keeping myself close with this knee control, okay? This leg, what was the inside leg, now has to become the outside leg on the same side as the primary, okay? I don't go over the top, like I don't try to swing it over because she can catch my foot and block it, right? Instead, I pull knee to chest and shoot my leg across. And now here I hook her hips and her butt and pull her to me, right? And now I'm gonna do that same motion, push the knee open, close my elbow, and there's my finish. Super, super strong, right? For her to get out of this, she has to take this foot out somehow. Like, how are you gonna, you know what I mean? Like, she has to take it out and around, she has to unravel this, how? I'm hooked in, she can't even reach my foot barely, it's behind her back, right? Make sense? Okay, so another option, I love that one, I break people there all the time. Another option is gonna be our honey hole entry, okay? When she unravels, I'm gonna hold this knee and I'm gonna follow her up here. I'm gonna put my knee across the hip line and my forehead to the mat. This is important that my forehead goes to the mat. You've probably seen Craig Jones do this a number of times. Uh, he's very, very good at it. Obviously, he's amazing, much better than I am. But um, there's some fine details in here that I'd like to convey to you guys. Obviously, um, uh, I do hit this motion quite a bit in the gym. And what it, the reason it's so successful is this is the primary leg. I'm after her left leg the whole time. Single leg X, primary. Enter the foot lock, primary. As she escapes the position, as she escapes the single leg X, she's thinking left leg. Left leg, left leg, left leg. Protect my left leg, protect my left leg. So when I hit her honey hole on the right leg, it's gonna really throw her off, all right? So here, single leg X. She starts to unravel the position, okay? I come up with her, look here, all right? And now my forehead's on the mat, I have a false grip here and a free hand. I'm gonna lift my hips up and my free hands gonna go between my legs and grab her far knee with a scoop. I pull the knee in, step my knee back, and lock in my honey hole. Now I'm in a top side honey hole. I like to have my knees on either side of her leg here on the mat, kind of wedging her down. Now, we, uh, we just looked at a honey hole, or we made a honey hole video the other day. I'll put the link down in the description. Um, where you can kind of go down that rabbit hole a little bit. Uh, but for now, we're just going to kind of look at my thoughts here, right? I have secondary leg, primary leg. This is the leg that's going to give me all the trouble. So I'm going to take it out of the picture. So here, I, I move the leg out of the way, put my head on the mat inside the leg. So now she tries to bring her feet together. She can't. So what's going to defend her primary leg? Nothing. So now I take my left hand, put her ankle up in the air, toes, Connect to my tricep, and I pinch in between my tricep and ribs. Wrist walk on the ankle, hand to chin, chin to hand, as I sprawl. And I get strong, strong breaks here. Okay? So again, from the other side, I'm playing single leg X. She starts unraveling the position, and I come up with her here. Okay? I'm on my forehead, so I can try to hot up. I reach back, scoop the knee, pull it in. Step my knee behind, and here. Now I can lock my figure four, and I can start to separate the legs. Put my head inside her foot. I use this hand to push, so it's her right leg, I'm using my left hand to push her ankle up and in. Catch toes with tricep, between tricep and ribs, there's my lock. Hands together, hands are chin, chin to hands, and I sprawl my hip. And there's a really, really strong break right there. Almost slipped me. All right, so again, single leg X, very good position. As all the leg entanglements have pros and cons. Single leg X is good for sweeping. It's good for entering straight foot locks. It's good for passing the guard. It's really good for opening up and exposing the heel for heel hooks, but it's really bad at finishing heel hooks because it's not a closed wedge. So you have to understand when it comes to the leg entanglements, what they're good for and what they're bad at. And then you can start chaining leg entanglements together. If you want to finish somebody good, somebody educated in the legs, you can't have one entanglement. You have to move through two or three or four in the process of attacking a finish, right? 
So we're starting single leg X, straight foot lock, very powerful as long as you're doing it appropriately, right? We need optimal positioning, optimal hands, and going to our shoulder point for the finish, right? If they're unraveling the position, we can switch to that other leg, uh, leg lock where we bring our outside foot to the inside and inside foot to the outside, right? That one's really hard to unravel, and then we can finish with a straight foot lock. Or we can come right up, edge our honey hole on the secondary leg, and look to break them from a top side honey hole position with inside heel hook. Super powerful positions. You're gonna break all your friends. Well, don't break your friends. <laughs> Tap them out, laugh at them, go break people in competition. Um, again, if you like the video, click that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done that yet. If you wanna see anything, have any questions about anything, uh, or want some intricate details, throw it down in the comments, and hopefully very soon I can get to that and make you a video. Otherwise, go trade. <laughs> Good job, man.